Good afternoon and welcome to Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Today we are launching our 10th episode and I want to thank everyone for their overwhelming support and generous comments. We've had fun and as we take a little break we are going to uh, wind down for a couple of weeks and then we will continue in the new year to host the show and bring in some wonderful new talent from all over southern New England. Today we have some Persians and some other unique felines. Our guest today is Debbie Isidorio from East Freetown who has two lovely cats. Could Debbie show us? This one here is a blue cream Persian. Her name is Brookline. She's four years old. And this one wiggling on my side. His name is Sweet Sensation. And he is a red and white tabby Persian who's being very difficult, but that's usually him. But this is him. And very good. And our other guest today is Karen Bernier from East Providence, Rhode Island. And Karen has a very unique breed. Karen, tell us about your breed. Okay, this is Quincy Maxwell. He is a long-haired Selkirk Rex cat, and he just turned one year old at the end of October. And one of the things that makes him unique is that he has long, curly fur, and he feels just like a sheep when you pet him. Very, very interesting. I've never seen one of these. Mm -hmm. I very. actually had to go to Tennessee to get him. He is a very handsome little fellow. Thank you. Very good. So we'll start with Deb. How did you start with cats? Oh, a very long time ago in 1990, I, um, I always loved Persians and I always loved cats and I always had cats as a child. So as an adult, I'm like, you know, let's get up into the world and I wanted a Persian. So I had gone to a pet shop and they had Persians, but they didn't look very well. They actually looked kind of, they were sick, unfortunately. So I had gone to get this little Persian charm at JCPenney and the woman there said that her mom wanted to get rid of her cat and it was a blue Persian so it was exactly what I wanted so I ended up with this little kitty and she unfortunately had lung cancer which was horrible and she died I only had her a year so I went looking for a Persian in 1990 for a purebred Persian and I ended up with a breeder and I started my first show cat and from there I have gone on to do this and become a CFF judge could you explain um, what CFF means? Oh, sure. CFF is Cat Fancy Federation. It's what I'm affiliated with. I am their vice president, actually, and I am president of two clubs underneath them, the Himalayan Cat Fanciers Association, and I'm also president of the um, National Persian Club. And right now I have two of my Persians. I don't have any Himalayans with me right now. Um, we are a not-for-profit organization. We have shows. Um, in, mostly in the New England states, um, pretty much um, we try to do one once a month, sometimes that doesn't work um, because it costs a lot of money to put on a show and we're a not-for-profit so we are self-sustained by our own exhibitors. You know, we have to fly in judges and we pay judges and we have to pay for caging and, and all of that so the only way we really make money is for people to come and see our beautiful cats because we do show them and people are welcome to come to our shows. In fact, our next show coming up is in January at Diamond Hill in Rhode Island. Very, very that good. That is our next show. Karen, how did you get interested in cats? Oh, I've <laughs> always loved cats. Um, growing up, I had a neighborhood stray cat that we adopted and he actually ended up living to be 21 years old and then after I was grown up and married, I wanted to get another cat. And my husband and I had to make a deal that if I got a cat, he got a dog. So we ended up with a husky and a um, pet quality Himalayan cat. And then um, after that cat passed at about age 15, I ended up with um, two more pet quality Himalayan cats. And then one time I went to a cat show that I saw advertised. I met Debbie here and showed her pictures of my cats, met a lot of friendly people, and it just kind of grew from there. And now I'm actually president of the um, Household Pet Club because I have household pets at home as well. 
That's fascinating. We'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> so, Debbie, how can people get interested in cats? In, in cats? In cats. Well, you really do have to love cats. I mean, if obviously, if you don't like one, you're not going to get one. There are definitely dog people, cat people. Um, it seems a lot of people that have cats have horses for whatever reason. Um, but our particular organization is called CFF, Cat Fancy Federation. Um, you can look us up on our website, which is um, cffinc.org. If you would like to participate, if you have a cat, you, a lot of people start off as household pets, like Karen did. Yep. She brought in her household pet. And, and, they now, would, and they showed for about five years, and now I've moved on to a purebred cat, and he competes in the altered class. So we have four classes. We have kitten class, which is four months to eight months. We have the whole cat, which is called our championship class, which is eight months to whenever, as long as they're not altered. And then there's our alter class, which is eight months, and they have to be fixed. They show as an alter, as um, my little girl here, Brookline, she is an alter, alter Persian, as well as her Rex. This one, he is a whole cat, so they don't compete in the same class. And then we have household pets, and a lot of people start with household pets because that's the, that's the love of their life. And um, there is no breed standard like the other three classes that a judge goes by. Anyone can enter a household pet into our association. Um, they, are, um, they are recommended to contact C um, CFF and, and get the information, and I have information as well. But um, you register to enter a cat show. It costs money, it's not free. Like I said, we are self-supporting, so it, it does cost money, but um, it's a wonderful thing to do with your pets, and a lot of people have such a good time that not well, only do they it's help It's a the good pets, entry, a good venue yes. to get people going, Yes, to absolutely. start. And then they see all the different breeds that we have, and CFF has 32 recognized breeds, though there are many, many more breeds out there with other associations. Um, and it's, it's just a wonderful thing. I love it. I've been judging now for 11 years. I'm an all-breed judge. Um, I do judge for other associations. I'm a guest judge for them. And where have um, you judged? Um, was the furthest I've been? Minnesota. Nice. I think that, no. Was it Minnesota? Yeah, I think it was. But I've been to Indiana, Canada, Florida, um, quite a few places. Very, very interesting. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's so very it's a rewarding. Fun hobby. I really like it. It's a hobby. But it's an expensive hobby because, you know, we don't win money when we right. show our cats. We really win um, the love and prestige of our cats. You know, we want to show the best that we have, the best of best that we have. And I am a cattery. Um, I do raise... What is your prefix? Um, my cattery name is Mondorio's Cattery. I'm okay. from East Freetown, Mass. I'm a small breeder. Um, I do Persians and Himalayans. And... Um, I truly love it. It's it's really it's it's wonderful. We are the friendliest organization I think out there of all the um, all the cat organizations. We also are the oldest registry, and we're celebrating our hundredth year this year. As a matter of fact, that's so a very that's, prestigious honor. That's a hundred years this year, and we are the oldest pedigreed registry. Which pedigreed means um, we keep track of all of our cats' backgrounds, so we keep track of all the generations to, to go forward. It's nice. Now, Karen, mm -hmm. could you talk about the household pet category? Sure. Um, I started showing my household pets about five years ago, and at that point they were about two years old, so they didn't even start as young kittens. So they can start at any age. Um, and my cats, although they were purebreds at that time, they were not show quality cats because I didn't get them to participate in showing. So neither of them could qualify to participate in the championship class because they have what would be considered breed faults. Um, like one of them, well neither of them have a face that's smooshed in enough as people would refer to it. And the other one has what we call a, a tail kink, which is a little like bend at the end of his tail. So he would be disqualified for that as well. So they compete in the household pet class and in that category there can be cats from shelters, cats of mixed breeds, unknown origins and 
they're all appreciated just for who they are as a cat. And loved, well loved, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And they all cheer for each other, like all the exhibitors who own the cats, they all cheer for each other when they win and congratulate each other. You brought some ribbons today. Oh, yes. Sh can you show us some of your... Absolutely. These are um, some of Quincy's ribbons. So he's only been in about four shows so far since I've gotten him. So he's got four different ribbons. And the way they work is every exhibitor gets a rosette to start the day with or to start the weekend. And as your cat is judged, if it makes a top 10 placement, you get a sticker with the placement name and the judge's name on it that you add to your rosette. So by the end of the weekend, you end up with quite a little collection of stickers and they show all of your wins for the weekend. Nice, very, yep. very nice. Very, very interesting. Yep. And I do have to interject that judging because I am a judge. The household pet class, believe it or not, is the hardest class to judge. And why is that? Because everybody wants their cat to win. It's just that's how it is. And everyone's Besides cat the dogs. Yes. And everyone's cat is special to them. And in the household pet class there is absolutely no standard that we use to judge a cat. Like these have standards. These two Persians yes. have standards. And when you judge you pick out the best cat that fits the standard. But in the household pet class, they can be anything you want. So it's really, truly the judge's decision, but it is the hardest one to make. And all the judges say that too. When we're sitting there and they're doing their top 10 for the household pets, <laughs> almost every judge says to us, this is the hardest class. I could have made any of these my number one cat. Probably wanted to take every one of them home. Yes. Too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that they a just lot. need to be well groomed so and clean and have their nails trimmed, and hopefully, they have a nice little personality. Like sometimes, one of my cats will actually climb the scratching pole that's attached to the judge's table and play with toys with the judges. And have fun. Yeah, exactly. It is fun. Exactly. We are a friendly, friendly association, and we are happy for each other as we, as your cat is shown through their life cycle, through their seasons. Now these guys are having fun. Well, this one's a little wiggly. Um, what is his name? Well, his name is actually Sweet Sensation. And then I'm a cattery, so his name is Sweet Sensation of Mondorios. The breeder who bred him is not a CFF recognized cattery. So we don't use their cattery name. We use their name and then we add our name. But what would his call name be? His. His. He's a he's a red tabby in white Persian. That's what he is. Oh yeah. Okay. That's Very what good. he is. And this is this is actually this one is my breeding, which she doesn't really like bright lights, so she probably won't open her eyes. But this is Brookline of Mondorios. All of my catteries cat names are all from the Boston Tea Stops. Okay. So she's she's a little she's a little blue cream Persian. Um, she's four years old, and she's a beautiful cat. She doesn't like to open up her eyes, which is one of the standards. You're supposed to have a cat that wants to open up their eyes, like this one. I mean, he, but maybe she'll open up her eyes for the. Oh no, she won't. But he will. But see how nice and round his eyes are. Where are you? There you go. Really, I'm taking him home. <laughs> he has beautiful, beautiful eyes. What a lovely face. I mean, they're both are beautiful cats. What a fabulous face. Could you ladies uh, talk about a little about cat care? Cat care. Well, um, all of your cats should go to the vets and be vaccinated. All cats need to be vaccinated. In fact, it's a law that they need to have their rabies. Um, care for these guys they do need to be combed never brushed combed i brought some combs here to show they're wide and you don't really want a comb that's too narrow because it rips out their fur so they need to be combed not brushed brush just mats their fur okay their undercoat and then once you think their undercoat is mat matted it's horrible to take care of um, so combing is the best 
and combing when it's not stressful, so if your cat is laying beside you, is a good time to um, introduce a comb. As a kitten, is a good time to introduce a comb. Um, these get bathed regularly. And you can bathe your household pets too, because if you're going to show them, they have mm -hmm. to be bathed, they have, their ears need to be cleaned, and they have to have their nails clipped. Nails clipped is very important. Not only does it save your furniture, but it's better for the cat. And if, you're, if, the nails cat, if the nails are short and they do go to your furniture, they're not gonna rip it apart. They're only gonna rip it apart if they can get their claws into it. And they usually scratch furniture because they don't have anything sturdy enough to scratch. Cats have to have a very good scratching post that does not move. Once it moves, they're afraid of it, and they're never gonna go back to it, and they're gonna find your couch because your couch doesn't move. So keep their nails short, get them a good scratching post, and groom them. So maybe the buying a scratching post would be an ideal gift for a cat. Yes. Act yes. 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 And we do, when we have our shows, we have vendors that have um, great, great products for cats when we have our shows. Um, again, we have our shows throughout the year. We have a very big Christmas show in December next year. I believe it's the 6th and the 7th, and it's in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. We have a huge vendor there that has a lot of scratching posts. Actually, we have two. So when you're buying a scratching post, be wary of if it moves. Make sure it, the cat can actually scratch on it. So, so for the average person who maybe just has a household pet, yeah. how often would you recommend that they have their nails trimmed? They, you, should, you should trim their nails at least once a month. Yeah. Or when you notice that they're in the, your lap and they, they pick you, their nails are too long. They right. need to be trimmed. So I mean, all cats, they, their nails do grow at different rates, but it's important to so keep their nails trimmed. So the, um, the cat should be taken to the vet or to a groomer? The, vet should, the cat should be taken to the vet or the groomer, or you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. I did not bring a pair of um, clippers with me, but really you just take off, come here. If, you, if you're grooming a cat's nail, you just take off the tip of it. They're all really short, because I keep them all really short. But you just look for the hook, and then you take the hook off. You don't cut the pink part, which is called the quick, because if you were to do that, the cats see. tend to bleed a lot. I don't know if you can see her nails. It's, where are Wish. you going? <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, it's very easy to do. But if you're afraid to do it, then, then go to your vet or even Petco. Petco has that service that they'll cut they your do. cat's nails. And, um, because so it, maybe it's better it should for be you done every, and it's better for the cat. But every four to six weeks, yeah, maybe? probably. Definitely. I usually do my household pet cat's nails about once a month. Okay. Yep. Very, very good. You know, and we show a lot, so, you know, we have to have their nails, you yeah. know, trimmed. So sometimes more often. There's nothing worse than a judge getting scratched because the cat's nails have not been. And it makes a big difference. And if you're going to bathe a cat, you want to have its nails done before you bathe it anyway, too. Hey, buddy. Talk about, Karen, if you could talk about uh, grooming. I mean, mm -hmm. bathing. Bathing, OK. Um, well, Quincy's a little bit different because he's a, a curly-haired cat. So he has a different bathing routine. But for my household pet cats, um, basically, there's different shampoos that you can use. You probably want to find something that's mostly natural. Um, if they're greasy, some people recommend using Dawn, you know, dishwashing detergent yes. because it's safe on animals. Um, and if, if there's, they're greasy and you do that first, you want to follow up with a nice pet shampoo after that. Um, I usually take care of my cats in the kitchen sink because it has a little spray attachment. Sure. So it's a lot easier to just kind of, uh, you know, get them wet to begin with. and. My cats have been doing it long enough so that they're usually not a problem in the sink. They will actually just kind of sit there, behave themselves, enjoy a nice massage as I rub in the shampoo and I kind of rinse them out really well. Um, when I take them out, they're all long haired, so I tend to kind of squeeze the fur out a little bit, not the cat, you know, but just the edges of the fur. And then I use a um, micro <laughs> towel to absorb a lot of the water. And then I don't have fancy grooming equipment like 
she has. So I use a regular hair dryer on my cats. Well, not him, because he's, he's a different, different standard to groom to. This guy actually um, has curling products that we use on him. And Talk about his breed. Okay. That's a very unique breed. He is. Um, he's super lovable. Uh, these cats sort of got recognized in about 1987. They say that there was a cat named Mr. Pesto that was rescued by a Persian breeder and it had unusual fur. So then that cat got crossed with one of her Persian cats in a breeding and they found out that the kittens actually had curly fur so they knew that it was a dominant trait and that's how the breed became as the story goes. Where was it developed though? Uh, in, that story says in the United States. Oh really? But I've also heard that it may have come from England as well. I've heard different things. Um, but now Quincy, he's long hair, so they also come in short hair varieties. Uh, they have curly hair that's supposed to be kind of like a kinky curl, but it gets separated with the strands. So I use a pin brush on him to actually separate them. So it's a wide tooth brush with the little tips on the end. Yeah. So that way he doesn't get matted or tangled and he doesn't get pulled. Um, he has nice, I don't know if you can see his eyes. Let's see, look at the camera. <laughs> he has round eyes. He has, in addition to curly fur, curly whiskers. So if you look at, I don't know if you can see the whiskers, probably not. But he has curly whiskers on his face. He has a nice round head. His ears are placed so that they don't interfere with the roundness look of the head. He has what we call a nose stop instead of a nose break like the Persians. And his body type should kind of be almost rectangular so that the width of his front legs is kind of even to the width of his back legs. And he's super lovable, super lovable. These cats cost a great deal of money, correct? That would depend on, on this, the, yeah, the, how, the show quality, yeah, whether the show quality, where you get them quality. from, if they have to travel to get to you, or if you travel to get them. It really depends. And different breeds sell for different amounts of money. Now, what colors does this oh, little guy come in? Oh, he's blue. Blue. Anything that's blue. gray in the cat world is actually a blue. A blue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now your cats here are? Yes. They are both Persians. Persians, but they are, I'm seeing different colors. This is a, this is a blue cream, and, a this blue. Is, and this is a red tabby and white. And the Persian has a very, very round, round head. Very round head. Don't stick your tongue out. And a very, very deep break right here. It's an indentation right at the top of their nose. It's a very, very deep end embrasure, which makes their face totally flat. Stay right there, buddy. So he, her face lines up perfectly like that. It's perfect from forehead to nose to chin. She has a beautiful, beautiful face. But the Persian has a short, cobby body. Even though he may be, he's much bigger than she is, but he's still very short and cobby. Um, their tails are very short, even though this is her tail. It ends here. It's very short compared to her body. This is her body. She has a very short, cobby body. And again, that beautiful round, round head, that very, very deep break. And, you know, if you, she, she, like her face just disappears. You can't even see it. And little tiny ears. They need to have little tiny ears. Um, and they need to have really big eyes. She does not like to open her eyes, so she doesn't do all that well sometimes at shows unless they can get her in a split second to go, oh, oh, you wanted me to look at you. Um, on the other hand, he has that a beautiful, beautiful face. He is a male, she's a female, so he is much larger than her. He has that beautiful round face too and that really deep break, stay. Um, and he has a short cobby body too, but he's bigger. So as long as they're in proportion, and his okay. eyes are gorgeous. And he has beautiful, beautiful big eyes. And he likes to open them. So that's a good thing. So when when you're when you are judging 
Mm -hmm. There is no preference to color. No, absolutely not. No. No. And they come in many colors. They come in many, many colors. This is just two that I have today. These are fascinating. See how flat his face is? <laughs> and he's got a gorgeous round face. Hi, buddy. You're going to be good. We're on TV. We're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so I really and truly love my cats. I just, I never want to be without them. You know, when they say, you know, the, you lose, you lose a cat, it's part of your family. And I'm never going to say that doesn't hurt because I have one that I still bring around with me. Um, but to say, and I hear people say this all the time, I never can get another one because my heart's broken. Well, another one never ever replaces the one that you've lost. It's just a new chapter in your life with your new friend. How many cats do you have? Right now I only have five. And how many do you have? I have three plus one dog. What kind of a dog do you have? A Siberian Husky. A lovely breed as well. Mm -hmm. Look at that guy. He is perked right up there. He's, He's yeah. fun. He's my baby. Are you going on to become a, uh, a judge eventually? Maybe at some point, not any time in the near future, just because of the busyness of my life at this point, but it's something I would consider. Um, I do um, work as a clerk at cat shows, so I sometimes sit at the judge's table and help do the paperwork and do the double checking of the judges. Very interesting. And that's the first step towards... Becoming a yes. judge. Yes. And you are an all-breed judge. I am. That requires a lot of work, doesn't it? It's a lot of studying, because you have to know we show 32 breeds. I mean, we don't have 32, pretty much. We, uh, most of them, I think that the most that we really do show is like 20. But you still have to know all about that particular breed. So there's you, a lot of studying. Do you have to submit to tests yes. and things? Yep, we do have tests. And you, when you begin, you get an advisor. So you learn under a senior judge. The new person would learn under a senior judge because they've been around for a long time. So sort you get of like an, an apprenticeship. Yes. Apprenticeship yep. rather. Yep. So you get an advisor and you do what's called classes. You do color classes, which doesn't mean color. It, it means um, like you do all of the um, Maine Coons. So you do all of the Persians and you compare them with your advisor and pull out what's in the standard and which cat best fits that standard. So you learn all of that as you go. But you know, it's intimidating the first time you are a judge for the first time because you're like, oh no, I gotta do this right. Um, but there I is a lot of studying a in the dog, dog world, right? In the dog and world. And I think we are about ready to wrap up. This has been fascinating. <laughs> we'll have these ladies back again sometime Everybody. next year to talk about the wonderful world of cats. Thank you very much. Good night.